Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hope life is treating you well on this beautiful Tuesday afternoon and thank you for watching this clip on finding inverse functions. Here we have a function here. Finding an inverse function actually just take two steps. Number one, we're going to solve, oh, I leave myself not enough space. Pretend that this is the word solve. Solve for variable x. In our case, we're going to solve for x using this one. And then the, the second step is a bit on the confusing side, but when we get there, we'll talk about a switch one x. Okay, that's it. So let's use the y as our fx. It's easier to write than f of x minus x over here, one plus of x. Okay, so what I really have is y, y over 1 equals to 1 minus x, 1 plus x radical here. What I'm going to do is the easiest way to get out this predicament of fraction. I'm going to draw a butterfly. What you do is you do the cross multiply when you have an equal sign. Pretending the multiply sign is the butterfly's guts. Okay, so y times 1 plus radical x is equal to cross of 1 times 1 minus radical x. And from here, I'm going to gather it, you know, y plus y times radical x is equal to 1 minus radical x. I'm going to gather the term does not have x to one side. So I have y minus 1 is equal to minus, let's move this one over, y radical x minus x. Okay. I don't know about you, I don't like this minus sign flowing all over the place, so I'm going to multiply by minus 1 on both sides. There's are easier ways, but for the web, let's keep it step by step. So on this side, I'll have minus 1 and positive 1, which is equivalent to 1 minus y. And on this side, since there's a minus sign, there's a minus sign here, everything become a positive. And then I'll pull the radical x out. Okay, so I have positive y plus 1. Now, once again, multiply by minus 1 in there, this whole thing really becomes y radical x plus radical x. And then pulling the radical x out, you'll see that's equal to this. Okay. We're almost there. y minus y, I'm going to divide. Well, almost there. See, I solved for x, but since radical x is the closest I can get so far, now I have y minus y, y plus y equal to radical x, and you guessed it, I'm going to multiply both sides. Actually, I'm going to square both sides, so I'm almost there. It's a good time to take a math break. Hmm, feeling like doing inverse today? Okay, back to math. Okay, so one more step here. We have x is equal to y minus y, y plus 1, the whole thing squared. Now, this up to here is we just uh, solved step 1, which is solve for x. Okay. Step 2 here, I'm going to swap the x and y. Now, the reason I have a lot of students ask me, why do we want to do that? The reason we do this is really a cosmetic reason. It's it's very, uh, mathematicians are very picky. They want the independent variable to be x and dependent variable to be y. So basically, we're swapping the x, y just to keep the notation um, the same. So here is a swap. So from here, I have my x rewritten as y, my y is rewritten as x. Then my inverse function here is y minus x, 1 plus x, the whole thing squared. All right. Well, I hope this one is clear. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan making learning math fun, at least trying to. Please comment or thumb up if it has been helpful. Until next time, have a confident day.